Did you ever produce an image that you were really proud of? Perhaps you were new to the craft and science of astrophotography. Or perhaps you were an old hand at it and you just did something different. Tried a new developing technique, played a bit differently with the colors, broke out of some canon to see if something else would work better. And then you were really happy with the results and you shared it, say on a Facebook group or Instagram or YouTube. And then along comes somebody who tells you your image is horrible and you're a joke. I think all of us, if we share our images, have had that happen from time to time. This image here of the Wizard Nebula is one of my favorites and I think one of the best I've ever produced. And I remember when I shared it on a Facebook group, Astrophotography. It's a big group, about 1.3 million members. And it was a much loved image. It got several hundred likes. But then I got one comment that really stuck in my mind. Something along the line of, your image is crap, why didn't you do it in narrowband and use an SHO palette? I had to pause there and really give some thought to where that would come from. I mean, the image obviously is not the result of narrowband techniques. In fact, this image was produced by way of LRGB. Most of my images are, since I have the good fortune to live beneath dark skies. So I replied to the person and asked why he thought it would have been better if I'd shot it in narrowband and used an SHO palette. And the response was a fairly predictable because it would be sharper. So once again, I went and looked at this image and compared it to a pile of images that I could find on Astrobin. And without bragging, I think I can say this is one of the sharpest images of this target ever produced with an amateur telescope. You may know of others, and if so, let me know. But for a mere 8 inch or 203 millimeter Schmidt Cassegrain, this image is extraordinarily sharp. So what was it that bothered that person so much about this image? Well, I'm pretty sure what really bothered the person was this was something he wasn't familiar with. Many persons live in urban areas where they have to contend with light pollution and, and that necessitates techniques that can punch through light pollution, such as narrowband. So shooting a narrowband and the palettes often associated with narrowband, such as HOO and SHO, were what he was familiar with. An LRGB image showing the detail and color possible with an LRGB image, this was outside his realm of experience. He may or may not have been very knowledgeable about shooting with narrowband, I don't know, but this image went outside the realm he understood and that made him uncomfortable. So he felt compelled to define the image as bad, to create a push to keep things within his comfort zone. In other words, he was a gatekeeper. Now, if you have shared your images anywhere, it doesn't even have to be astrophotography, it could be ordinary terrestrial photography, it could be something nice, a kitten playing in the sunlight, a dog catching a frisbee, children laughing as they run under a sprinkler, a happy new bride at a wedding, it doesn't matter. We are all going to encounter some person who's going to tell us, man, I would be embarrassed to share photos like yours. And we tend to encounter those from either gatekeepers, which are persons who are insecure because your techniques went outside their realm of knowledge and experience, or they come from trolls, which are persons who are just essentially miserable and Something to bear in mind about that kind of person is misery likes to share. I think the, one of the ways you can tell the difference between the trolls and the gatekeepers is the gatekeepers believe there is a way that you should do things and they are adamant about it. That is the way you should have done things. Whereas trolls, they just want to make you feel bad so they say some horrible things, something or other. So here's an image that I consider only ordinary. It's not very good. It's a picture of the Turfid Nebula and Webb's Cross just on the left. When I shared this image well over a year ago, I had noted that it was shot during a very hot and humid summer night and the Turfid was just over the horizon. So I only had a couple of hours of integration on it, but I'd always wanted to shoot the nebula, so I did. However, since I had so little integration time and because the conditions were so bad, all the red dust and gas in the background it, it didn't show up well. It really looked blotchy, awful, I thought. So I had noted in my post that I had de-emphasized the surrounding gases to draw the eye toward the beautiful, bright colors of the Turfid Nebula. Now, when I shared this image, I had just started the Sky Story channel. This was, I guess, about a year and a half ago. And I only had a few hundred subscribers at the time. And to my amazement, no, rather dismay, this person who ran what I thought of at the time as a, a huge astrophotography channel started messaging me. And the opening message began something like this. I love to look at your images and watch your channel because it makes me think. 
I can never figure out if you're just a joke or your images and your channel are supposed to be a comedy. He began sort of cyber stalking me on, on Facebook groups even. He would monitor my posts and he would post links to his own videos within my posts with statements like, this is the only way to do it right. And around that time I had discovered that if one actually used a different order of developing in PixInsight than was recommended by the creators of PixInsight, frequently you could get better image results. And I had posted a video about that. This guy seemed to take this as personally offensive as, I don't know, as if I had insulted his mother or something. He began a new level of insults and tirades, making statements like, everybody's just watching you to laugh at you. You're a joke. You're an idiot. You should get off YouTube. You shouldn't post your images anymore. The guy was bizarre. I know many of you are familiar with him, but I'm going to give him more respect than he gave me and not mention his name. But I will tell you that he had the distinct privilege of becoming the first person that I ever hit the hide button on on this channel. But before I did go that far, I got to thinking, he's so critical, but he has this big astrophotography channel. Maybe there is something to his critique. I should at least take a look. Perhaps I can learn something from him. So I googled him and discovered that he had an astrobin page, and I popped over there to take a look at his images. And given the venom of the statements he would make to me and, and the vicious critiques he would make of my images, I had expected his images to be masterpieces. I had really been thinking that he would turn out to be some kind of high-strung astrophotography Picasso. One of those guys who just has a, a flaming artist temper and little tolerance for anything less than perfection. And perhaps his motivation was just to try to drive people to do the best they can. But when I popped onto his Astrobin page, I was shocked. His images were horrible. And I don't mean that in a mean-spirited, retaliatory, or vindictive sense. I mean, technically, his images were horrible. Blacks were crushed. Whites were blown out. Saturation clipping was rampant. Often his images were gritty. His images of star clusters in particular were absolutely afflicted with artifacts. And weirdly, he had injected a kind of dayglow green into the color scheme of many of his nebulae. I could go on, but suffice it to say the images were bizarre and awful. And so that was it. I got tired of this guy and hit the hide button. However, the encounter was my first clue to a pattern, a thread that runs common between all gatekeepers. Bear with me through one more useful anecdote and I'll explain it. Here's an old image I did of the Orion Nebula and the nearby Running Man Nebula. It's an HDR image or a high dynamic range image. I was able to create it by exposing for different ranges of brightness. And then, in a layer-based photo editor, for me that's Affinity Photo, I combined the different exposures together, which allowed me to preserve the detail of both the dimmest and the brightest areas. The video that I made on how to do this got thousands of views and a great many likes, but predictably, it drew gatekeeper critique because I had deviated from Canon and had committed the apostasy of doing this without using PixInsight. I was told that real astrophotographers use PixInsight just like NASA. And given that I spent much of my life working with scientists, I found that last statement to be interesting to say the least. Everybody with scientific training, myself included, just uses whatever it takes to get the job done effectively. I spent many years of my life in university studying the sciences. I have a particular interest in emergence intelligence or how intelligence emerges from complex systems such as a forest superorganism. I studied under and worked for years with scientists, and I have a fair idea of how scientists operate. Actual scientists don't sit around critiquing each other because they aren't using the hardest, most complex software or because they're using software that mere mortal laymen use. They use whatever gets the job done well, to be frank. And because there is always pressure for time and funding, they process their data with what is also the most efficient. Which is why, frankly, I eschewed PixInsight long ago. Compositing together an HDR image like this would be very difficult in a non-layer based tool like PixInsight, whereas it's a walk in the park with a layer based photo editor. Anyway, between the bizarre encounter with a venomous guy who ran the astrophotography channel and the gatekeepers who were furious about my heretical application of layer based photo editing to astrophotography images, this got me to thinking, okay, so what's going on here? So I did a kind of meta study of trolls and gatekeepers. Which is to say, I did my best to find the social media history and the imaging history of every troll and gatekeeper that commented. What I found was, shall we say, insightful. 
The majority of them had little to no social media history on astrophotography websites. When they did make an appearance, it was usually something hypercritical and mean-spirited. The trolls, almost universally, had no imaging history. The gatekeepers sometimes had a little imaging history, sometimes more, with a common thread running through their images that they were technically horrible, filled with problems the like of which I had mentioned earlier, crushing the blacks, blowing out the whites, saturation clipping, and grittiness. And this led me inevitably to the conclusion that all trolls and all gatekeepers, the scathing things they say, they aren't really about you or your images. They are born out of their own shortcomings. They have a narrow body of knowledge. I don't think they really understand astrophotography. They understand a canon that they have been taught, a fixed and rigid set of techniques they follow like doctrine. And because they don't really understand the theory, they have a rigid idea of how things must be done. And if you or your images deviate from that doctrine, they find it wrong, even threatening. I've said ever since I started this channel, if you enjoy your images, then your image is done right. And if you would like to share it with anybody, then by all means, go ahead and share it. It makes you happy, and that's what you're doing photography for, right? What matters is, did you have fun making the image? Did you learn something from making the image? Did you learn about space, science, astronomy? Did it make you a better person? And did those who saw it also enjoy it? Did they also learn something from it? If that's the case, then your image is a positive contribution to this world and the human condition. And if you wanted to experiment with a new method of making those images, a new color palette, for example, or a new way of working your histogram, or a new way of combining the tools on a layer-based photo editor, and so on, and you want to share that with the world, that you did it and it worked for you, do so. That's how we add to the body of knowledge. And when inevitably some troll or gatekeeper appears to tell you how horrible your work is, one, you can ask yourself, does the person actually have a kernel of truth within that harsh critique? If you see something that perhaps you could do better, then by all means apply it. Two, remind yourself of something that a professor of mine in psychology ages ago used to call the rat's ass principle. Just remind yourself nobody else gives a rat's ass one way or the other what that person thinks. Now with that said, do be aware that lots of times trolls and gatekeepers travel in packs. So if they turn up in a gang, don't let that fool you into thinking everybody's against you. You have an ignore button, make liberal use of it. They and their little hate click will soon disappear into the insignificance from whence they came. And three, remind yourself that there are a lot of ways to approach astrophotography, just as there are many ways to approach photography, many styles, many techniques, and a pretty much infinite number of ways to combine those styles and techniques. And you, my friend, are entirely entitled to do things your way because they're your images. Let those images and the way that you create those images be part of your voice and attain your vision. As far as the trolls and those who are just mean-spirited, well, I put this latest image up here because it relates to one of my favorite true troll stories. About a month ago, I did a video on how you can effectively shoot through moonlight. And I shared that video on another Facebook group, Learning Astrophotography, which has a couple hundred thousand members, I think. One of the so-called group experts, I don't know, a, a few minutes, a few hours after I posted it, said something to the effect of, again, this isn't a quote, but it's as close as I can recall. Well, duh, you can shoot through moonlight. You just use narrowband. <laughs> I mean that, by the way. He literally wrote duh in his, in his reply. I replied to him and explained that because the moon is a broadband emitter, the ability of narrowband to help with moonlight is limited. Whereas narrowband filters block out the specific frequencies of light produced by man-made light pollution, the moon reflects sunlight, which is all frequencies of visible light, making narrowband techniques very limited against moonlight. And so the group expert, quotes around the word expert, replied, nope, you can use the HA filter to filter out moonlight, which also isn't true. The HA filter helps us with moonlight because the atmosphere refracts mostly green and blue light. So by using an HA filter, we can restrict most of the moonlight interference in the atmosphere, but moonlight pollution that crosses over the red range is going to pass right through the HA filter. So while an HA filter can help, what it can actually do in the end is limited. So then I asked the person if he had actually watched the video, because since filtration is not really an effective defense against the moon, the video covers a technique I developed that uses something else entirely to deal with moonlight. And I explain the technique involves separating high from low frequency information. High frequency information is where the detail can be found, but it takes a long time to gather. 
However, it's fairly resistant to moonlight. Low frequency information contains color and brightness information, and it is what is vulnerable to moonlight, though it can be gathered quickly. I explained that what makes the technique useful is that one can gather high frequency information during a night of a strong moon, even a full moon, and add it later to low frequency information, which can be gathered much more quickly. And when it was pointed out that his scathing critique had to have come without even bothering to watch the video, he just went poof. I didn't hear from him again. So here we have this person who felt a need to make a pointed and insulting critique about something he hadn't even taken the time to watch. And on top of that, he's basing the critique on narrowband theory, which clearly he doesn't really understand. It begs the question, what would motivate a person to do this? Well, I think it's related to another very important point about the nature of gatekeepers and also trolls. They have a high need to perceive themselves as the elite few in the know. And because of this, they will often talk to you and critique your work as if you are a moron compared to them. In any event, don't buy the lie. Just chalk them up as walking, talking examples of the Dunning-Kruger effect in action and move on. So, group expert or not, I then did what I always do with trolls and hit the ignore button. The thing with trolls is they have an attitude, a chip on their shoulder. They are having a bad day and misery loves company. That's a very old but very true moral. Or maybe they're just mean-spirited. I mean, one in 6.5 people is a functional sociopath. Those are persons who just enjoy causing harm because it amuses them. When you encounter that kind of person, just hit the hide button on YouTube, the ignore button on Facebook, or whatever platform you're using them. Just delete them, douse them, and scrub them from your mind because they aren't worth giving further thoughts to. Whatever they're on about, it's really about them, not you. Essentially, what I'm trying to say in this video that I hope isn't too soapboxy is don't let trolls and gatekeepers stop you from exploring, experimenting, and discovering astrophotography for yourself and sharing your images, images that should conform to your vision and express your individual voice. Ultimately, don't let trolls and their kinfolk gatekeepers take the joy of astrophotography away from you. You don't owe them anything create astrophotography, have a blast, learn something, grow as a person, and feel free and proud to share what you have learned and made with the world. If you have any thoughts or comments or observations of your own anecdotes that you might want to share in the comment section, please feel free to do so. And thank you for taking the time to watch. Now, it's a clear night for me here in Eastern Canada, the third in a row, and I have so much data collected from the observatory that I haven't even been able to process it all yet. Plus, it's autumn, so there's lots of autumn chores to do on a backwards homestead. There's firewood to cut and split, apples to harvest, before winter maintenance to get done around the cottage and the observatory. So, time for me to get out there, because I need all of that done when the sun goes down, because then it's time to get out there and shoot the sky.